Good evening. This is a sprint workout, a uh, high cadence sprint workout. I'm going to warm up here for 10 minutes. It's my first attempt at a broadcast. We'll see how this goes or how dumb it is. I'm just having fun. I am, I've got a split screen here. I'm watching a uh, mountain bike video that I've taken off from YouTube. Um, somebody posted from around here of last year's, well, the first hour anyway, of last year's Barry Roubaix. It's a, technically a cyclocross race, but probably split fairly evenly 60 40 cyclocross bikes to mountain bikes couple of sections that are really difficult on a cyclocross bike where mountain bike helps, but for the most part, it's a gravel road race. I kind of find watching some of these videos help out with the monotony of being on a trainer. So for the last couple of weeks, I've started my own amateur training plan, um, kind of uh, kind of on the cheap, looking around for a, some way to help train and, and gain strength over the off season. And so I've taken some of the drills that I've read about, kind of put them into a weekly schedule and about five nights, five days a week, I've got some sort of plan, some sort of scheduled ride, uh, various drills that uh, that also go along with uh, some strength training that I'm doing. Uh, no weight strength training, just push-ups, pull-ups, uh, squats, and just essentially using my body to to do high repetition uh, strength building uh, and core core strength uh, improvement and balance that kind of thing. Um, I'm on a road bike right now, but I'm typically a mountain biker and compete in Michigan. Um, have raced this past year in the sport class, looking to move up into the expert class this coming year and. Uh, was a Clydesdale rider in uh, sport last year. Raced in the CPS division and or the CPS series rather. Took first in sport in Clydesdale. So now I'm looking to move up. Maybe slip underneath the Clydesdale threshold. We'll see. But. My warm-up is not very scientific. Of course, none of my training is really scientific. I just push until I feel like I can't really push anymore. So I would not recommend using my plan, um, or I should say use my plan, I guess, at your own risk. I don't know that it'll benefit you. don't know that it'll benefit me. But I'm trying it out, and if it works, and it helps somebody, cool. Um, if you are interested in checking out what I'm doing or following me on uh, my training path this winter, you can go to my WordPress blog, uh, which is uh, josephlampin.wordpress.org. Again, I'm no professional. This is uh, purely amateur training here.
plan for tonight is about 55 minutes with that includes a 10 minute warm up and a 10 minute cool down. Uh, yeah, scratch that. 60 minutes, 10 minute warm up, 10 minute cool down. I'm going to do three sets of 20 reps, um, high cadence sprints. And each rep is 15 seconds as fast as I can spin, uh, which is where the high cadence comes in. 15 second rest. So, 10 minute warm up, 10 minute sprints, uh, 5 minute rest, 10 minute sprints, 5 minute rest, 10 minute cool down. I think that adds up. If you follow this all the way through, you'll get it. You'll figure out how long I'm doing it. So, in my world, Iceman was the last mountain bike race of the season. Uh, first weekend of November up in Traverse City. I took a three to four week hiatus where I uh, rode a little bit outside but didn't ride too much just to give my body a break from the year. And then in the beginning of December, started over again. And so. That's where I'm starting now, just looking to uh, kind of rebuild and build on, you know, and add on to my conditioning and strength from last year. So these workouts over the next couple of weeks won't be as grueling as they'll get to be, um, but I'm still trying to just kind of ease back into this and build. You'll see me drinking from a couple different water sources. I try and keep as much water as I can down here with me. No reason to run out of water when you're at home. So uh, got a big silver container that I'll drink from during uh, warm up, cool down, and rest periods. And then if I need something during a drill, I've got a couple of water bottles on my bike. Find it just easier to and more natural when I'm going hard to grab it out of the water bottle cage, which is what I'm used to. Then trying to stretch up and grab it off off from my bench here. Got a couple of fans going in the background. If you can't hear that, but a minute left. Um, my warm up, I've progressively increased my uh, my gearing as I've warmed up um, intentionally. I don't think a warm up has to be just uh, you know easy easy pedaling the entire time. I think you, a good warm up should progressively get you um, warming up harder and harder, uh, similar to the way you might prepare for a baseball game. You see major leaguers start out where, with real loose throws and then progressively get both further away and throwing harder. So by the time I get started here in the next few seconds, I'll be in decent shape. Some people use a 15 minute warm up. I'm just using a 10 minute warm up for now. So I'm going to roll into my first high cadence right here. I don't think it matters how what your speed is when you get up there, it's just the spinning. You want to have enough resistance, but try to spin the legs.
trying to control my breathing. <laughs> I haven't said this before, this kind of sucks. <laughs> Ah. <sighs> 
couple of sets or a couple of reps. Don't talk to me for a little bit. harder to drink out of in the water bottle too which is the other reason why I only sip from it during the breaks. So the Barrier Bay is uh, watching the first climb from the old start and by the old start I mean all this starts up until this year, this coming year. Just notified today that they're changing the start. Hastings, Michigan has uh, graciously offered to host the Barry Bay this year. So the start finish line will be downtown Hastings, which will allow the 36 and the 99, or the 36 and the 61 mile loops to have approximately 99% of the exact same loop that they have in the past. Uh, the 24 mile loop will be different, but it'll be nice finish area with festivities and awards and everything. And so the, the climb that I'm watching, which has been the first major climb, the two years that I've competed in this race, will now be more towards the uh, middle of the race, which will make it a little bit easier too. The uh, field will be split up a little bit more. It's kind of a mad dash to this race or to this hill. It has been in the past and it's really crowded and it's an extremely difficult two track to climb. And so this might um, alleviate the congestion on that climb a little bit quite a bit so that's what I'm watching um, half my rest period is over already um, if you see me breathing out really heavy and hard it's a technique that I picked up like a tip I guess that I picked up from another um, from a pro from a somebody who trains people for a living. Um, if you Google, um, if you Google how not to get dropped in the hills, I think you should end up with a YouTube video of the gentleman, uh, maybe cycle fit. Um, but, uh, so I'm just trying that out. I don't know whether or not it helps. It seems to help balance out the breathing which is important and I should probably take this rest spending a little bit more time breathing than talking
10 seconds to go. And we're back at it. I hope if you're watching this, you're either joining me in the fun or getting a good laugh. I don't mind either.
halfway. Remember, if you miss a few seconds, you're only cheating on yourself. If you don't give 100%, you're only cheating on yourself. how to count, it takes longer to get to the end. I was thinking I was closer. Two more reps.
I started getting a side ache there with about six reps to go, which is why, I don't know if you noticed, but I really focused on kind of a consistent breathing a trick I learned running, which I hate to do. But you get that side ache. I get a lot more frequently running than I do riding, but typically the cause is an erratic um, breath stroke or not consistent breathing, rather. Recently, watching a video or reading an article, I guess, and uh, according to it, I guess you're not really supposed to be on a road bike for training. Different geometry and whatnot. So we'll see. This is what I got. This is what I'm going to be on. I'm assuming that trumps not riding. The other thing I noticed, not tonight, but first when I started this particular training set, I've got another sprint workout that I use. It's a little bit different, but this one in particular, you don't actually get to watch a whole lot of video because you're watching your timer. So, there's some value in some of these videos that you can find that'll have uh, little timers up in the corner or kind of give you a kind of direct you with effort level so you can focus on watching the, the fun video and less time watching the clock. I haven't done that with any of my videos yet with the mountain bike videos and whatnot. Anyway. may have to find a more comfortable seat. Hey, you'd be another 30 seconds or so and we're on the last set. seconds.
beginning to hurt. <laughs> Here. It may seem that I'm pedaling easier. I tend to warm up over time. Kind of get stronger as I go. So my miles per hour haven't slipped really.
Two more reps. Well, that doesn't do any good. All right, cool down. So that's my high cadence. Whatever it's called. High cadence sprint. Oh yeah, I was going to point out while I was riding, thought of this, I don't know if you caught me. Um, so they're 15 second sprints, 15 seconds off. And so when you start, you start a, on the minute and then on the 30 seconds. And so in anticipation of it hitting zero, and needing to go and wanting to be pretty close to peak rotation once you hit one second I actually start spinning at about 59 and 29 so to speak but it's in my gear that I had to rest in so <clears throat> shift up a gear for the uh, once I get to the one second, you know, the one second and 31. 
spin in that higher gear. And then I go all the way through the 15 and the 45 and then reduce the gear back down. So I'm in the off gear for 15, in the high gear for 15, but by increasing my rotation just before I need to uh, hit the hit it again. Um, I can shift into that higher gear at a more desirable uh, rotation instead of having to at zero hit the higher gear and then slowly, you know, probably takes three seconds to move up, move up to that rotation that I want. So it kind of gives me the effect that I want. You're still spinning pretty hard to get the rotation up as you're ramping up, but then you don't spin out either after you shift. So that's just the way I do it. If uh, I'd love to hear somebody else who's got a different way of doing it, if they have or a different technique, always open to that. And particularly if you've got a technique to gain endurance and strength and bike handling skills without actually having to ride the bike, I'd love to hear that too. without it being a motorcycle. Got a bit of a creaky floor. I should tell you what I'm riding. I'm uh, riding a uh, 2008, I think it's a 2008, 2008 Specialized Sequoia. It's kind of entry level road bike, nothing special. It shifts kind of wonky. I ride uh, a 29er Specialized 2012 Epic. 
um, aluminum. Um, it's the Epic Comp. Nice bike, but not a uh, not a twenty pounder by any means. By any means. Um, and then I have a a specialized rock hopper single speed twenty nine er. Um, that's actually sitting behind me. I got that up on on repair right now. But once the snow hits here, I'll ride that single speed outside. My neck, my neck of the woods. They plow the bike bike paths. So during the winter, you can actually get a pretty good workout, but um, also have a safe, passable riding area. Do a lot of riding like that at night. Got lights. Um, streets are fairly well lit too, but it's a lot of fun. Um, and I do hit some of the local trails that are open for winter riding. Some of them are, are, are closed for cross-country skiing and such, but a few of them that are open. I uh, don't have a heart rate monitor hooked up to my road bike here. I've got one for my mountain bikes, but uh, I don't. This is my first year with a with a bike trainer, so I have not um, <coughs> I have not set that all up yet. I actually need probably an upgrade and heart rate monitor and all that kind of stuff. And then I think you probably see a lot of pros that. And, and professional trainers that will train with heart rate based on heart rate. I kind of wing it. I kind of know approximately where my heart rate is. Um, maybe that's something I dig into next year. But. I kind of go by feel, I guess more than anything else. Push it when I know I better push it. Lay back a little bit when I'm pushing it too hard. Oh my, almost done here. Another 20 seconds or so. I'll lay it off. Oh, it's a good ride. I hope you enjoyed the comedy hour. And I'm done. So, maybe we'll see you again sometime.